protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com I'm now joined by Paul Nalen, who's going to be running against Paul Ryan, the swamp, if you will, of the GOP. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Great to be on. Well, this is your first time here with InfoWars. I'm sure a lot of people know who you are by now. You've been pretty prevalent on Twitter at P. Nalen. But talk about yourself real quick. What got you into politics? Why are you planning on running against Paul Ryan in Wisconsin's first district? I'm a manufacturing guy. I started out in a factory at 18 years old. I eventually ran that factory, got my engineering degree at night. I've run factories all around the United States and are all around the globe. I was in charge of Europe, the Middle East, and Africa for a Fortune 500. And when I heard that Speaker Ryan was pushing this Trans-Pacific Partnership, I, I couldn't believe it. He was my uh, representative here in Wisconsin, and I reached out to him, and I reached out to uh, Governor Walker, in fact, and said, hey, we can't do this. This is crazy, you guys. Um, and he wasn't relenting. He was working to fast track that legislation. And I said to myself, well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up supporting whoever it is that runs against Speaker Ryan. But months and months started moving by. That was early 2015. And uh, nobody stepped up to run. And eventually I said to myself, I'm going to have to do this myself. I'm going to have to run against Speaker Ryan, I'd never run for office in my life before. And so I reached out and, and to see if I could develop a network of people who would support me. And lo and behold, I found out I could. So in four months, between April and August of 2016, we were able to get Ryan to go on CNN and tell Manu Raju that Trans-Pacific Partnership was poorly negotiated. It was a bad deal. It needed to be renegotiated. And it was shocking, actually, for him to go on and say that because the legislation had been negotiated for over five years, over half a decade. Um, it was in a locked bunker. And he knew what was in that legislation. And he was disingenuous. He said uh, the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton did a poor job in negotiating it. And that was that was a bald faced lie. And he even went on further to say that uh, Fast Track gave Congress the ability to negotiate the trade deal. And that was a lie because the United States trade representative had already been negotiating it for over a half a decade. And what Fast Track did was it essentially said this is going to be an up or down vote. Congress doesn't get to change it. They just get to vote yes or vote no. And so um, I was strongly against Trans-Pacific Partnership and strongly for securing America's borders. And the only candidate who matched up with me, you can see I got his sign right behind me, right? He's the only guy, the only one who was talking that same thing. And the first Monday in office, President Trump signed us out a Trans-Pacific Partnership. God bless him. Well, and I'm hoping that Donald Trump creates Paul Nalens all over America. I'd love to see more people like you. Hey, if you want the job done right, do it yourself. I think that that's kind of your approach to this whole thing. And, you know, getting back to Paul Ryan real quick, you know, this is a guy to me that is soft as butter. OK, he is not hardcore on any of Donald Trump's policies. He's been very wishwashy with the Affordable Care Act, the border wall, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously you going up against Paul Ryan, you're going to get a lot from the GOP. I'm just curious, what have inner party members, what has the response been from the GOP with your campaign? Oh, they absolutely uh, have their knives out for me. They're they're not interested in me. Um, challenging Ryan at all. They want Ryan to skate along and do whatever he wants because he brings back millions of dollars to Wisconsin. Uh, he spent $10.6 million against me, against a guy who's never run before. He spent $10.6 million. That's a huge amount of money. Uh, it's essentially 10 times what anybody will spend in any uh, normal race. I mean, this, this last uh, Karen Handel and uh, John Ossoff race was absolutely out of out of the even realm of normalcy. Um, but but look, Speaker Ryan spends that $10.6 million here in the district for it. He gets positive press coverage. 
There is no negative articles written about Ryan in this district, unless it's written by a Democrat. And this is an R plus three district. So the Democrats really, they're not gonna win this district. Um, not going against Paul Ryan. So, so it's incumbent on me to run in a primary against Speaker Ryan and, and, and beat him, because that is the only way we are gonna get a true conservative, true patriot, uh, in office here in Wisconsin, he promised us a repeal vote on Obamacare, and we didn't get one. And he didn't hold the vote because the conservative, the 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 conservatives were going to vote for it. Jim Jordan said on the radio, I heard him that they had a bill ready to go to Trump's desk, and all of a sudden Ryan shows up with this Ryan Care 1.0 uh, nonsense, and they were shocked. the The Freedom Caucus was shocked by that, and. So Ryan then told told uh, President Trump, I don't want to have a vote. Why we, we don't have the votes. Why should we have a vote? Well, the answer is so that America can see what, who are the squishes. Who are those who, who say they're Republicans, they're, they're for smaller government, they're for free uh, enterprise and, and real free trade, not these fake free trade deals like we get with Trans-Pacific Partnership or this ridiculous border adjustment tax that we just defeated yesterday, I might add. Um, Speaker Ryan did not have a vote. He, he, every, we're paying for everything that Obama had in place in the 2015 omnibus when Ryan came into office. We're still funding all those things. We're funding sanctuary cities. We're funding the dangerous refugee resettlement. I mean, if you go, look, if you're tired of Speaker Ryan, go to my website, elect Nealon, N-E-H-L-E-N, go to electnealon.com. Paul Ryan has so many people maxing out to his campaign, $2,700. Yeah, and let's this. be clear too, you tweeted this, most of his money, 99% comes from outside of the district. Isn't that shocking? I mean, it I'm not shocked by it, but it, it should be shocking, yes. Yeah, well, you would think that the local news media would say, well, wait a minute, he's not really... He's not really representing workers in Wisconsin. He's representing these big special interests. The vast majority of his money came from inside the DC Beltway, like 1.3 million. That's right. And then right behind that is New York, Chicago, Houston, LA. That's not representative of Wisconsin's first district. We've got uh, Racine and Kenosha in the east, small, small cities uh, outside of Milwaukee. And it's then we've got city, Jamesville. Racine, Wisconsin. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, I ran one of SPX's flagship uh, businesses here out of Delavan. Um, almost five hundred. Another great city. Great, great lake <laughs> cities up there in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, I live right outside of uh, Geneva Lake here in uh, Williams Bay. It's beautiful here, and a lot of farming, a um, lot of good manufacturing here, and. Speaker Ryan is all about bringing in labor from low-cost countries. He is all about um, these visas, these H-1B, H-2B, uh, H-4 visas. He is, they, I just heard today that Kelly uh, over at DHS is going gonna, is gonna to overrun the cap on the H visas. It's absurd. We do not need... Uh, inferior foreign labor replacing Americans in their job. And that's exactly what Speaker Ryan is doing. He is replacing Americans with foreign workers because they're cheap. That's why. That's the only reason. And that's what his donors are paying for. So you look at a guy who raised $18 million, almost $19 million, and, and 226000 of it came from inside this district. I put $100,000 of my own money into my campaign last cycle. And you know, my campaign didn't pay that, pay that all back to me. I, I, they still owe me the vast majority of it. I, I consider that a, a down payment on this run. So Speaker Ryan put zero dollars in his own campaign, zero dollars of his own money. I put a hundred, I'm not a rich man. I'm not Donald Trump. I, as I said, I started out in a factory when I was 18 years old. I put that money in there because 
That that had to be done. We had well, that's to that's because that. you're running for America. Paul Nalen is running for America, folks. And this is how we drain the swamp. You want to drain the swamp. The onus falls on us to win in the midterm elections coming up in 2018. Getting Speaker Ryan out and Paul Nalen in is one of the ways to drain the swamp. I want to tell you about some of the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We are under constant attack. You know it by now from the mainstream media. They're trying to attack us on every, every level. Now with the YouTube scandal, they're demonetizing our channels, which again takes a huge chunk out of our income, which is why we always appreciate and rely on you getting the products because that's how we stay afloat. They can't get to us that way. They can't pressure you to not buy the products they don't have that power and that's why you're the key to this entire operation we have super blue fluoride free toothpaste bubblegum flavor just arrived at infowarsstore.com this is by listener request bubblegum flavored super blue toothpaste now available at infowarsstore.com in limited supply again if you're not using fluoride free toothpaste by now then you're absolutely insane harvard studies it reduces IQ, it causes bone cancer. It's not great, let's just put it that way. And I've been using it for about, what, 15 years now? So you're gonna buy it anyway, why not buy it from us? It's in limited supply, but it is available at InfoWarsStore.com with the new bubblegum flavor, super blue fluoride free toothpaste, and it supports this network, which is under constant demonization and attack because we don't take big fat checks from George Soros. We don't get put on extremist lists even though they want us to. That's how they're taking away the YouTube money. That's why we need your support more than ever because we're not funded by giant corporations who are now pulling the plug on YouTube as they move it into a TV thing, a Netflix model to drown out independent voices. So support us by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com.